Okay, so I've got a very basic floor plan and the section as well still in a fairly basic form, but that's enough for me to start to set up my printing. So, so I'll actually leave that there. So first I just want to show you um, how to print uh, from model space to do a quick print. And so there I'm going to go to the main menu without setting anything else up and, uh, and choose print. Now when you get this message you'll see this come up quite often. Uh, I'd recommend that you just avoid that flooding. This comes up automatically sometimes. It won't always come up, but it does come up sometimes. Guys over there, can you just keep it down? Okay, so again, um, don't use batch plotting. If you don't know what it is, avoid it. And so the bottom option there, continue to plot a single sheet, is all you should need to choose when you see this message. You won't always see it. Okay, so, so I just went to the main menu, the big A, and then print. Okay, so again, continue to plot a single, single sheet if you get that message. And then I'm going to set up my basic print settings. So I'm not going to make a um, physical print, I'm going to do a virtual print. So I'm going to choose the Adobe PDF um, converter. And then over here, I've got the plot style table. I'm going to set that to monochrome. And then it'll ask you if you want to assign this to all layouts. Just say yes there. So monochrome means it's going to print all of your lines black. And, uh, and that's usually what you want. Then now, yes, yeah, come record again. So now I'm going to come down to my paper size and choose A3. Now that's just a guess can adjust that. Then what to plot? I'm going to ch uh, choose the option there. We'll click on that arrow and then choose the window option. So AutoCAD needs to know which part of what I've drawn to print. Otherwise it'll print everything. So if I choose that window option. And is the window referring to the... It's a window you make. So here I'm going to click two points to make a window over the, the things I want to print. Oh, we'll, we'll do that in a second. So it, it'll be landscape, but we'll change that in a second. So, so now I can go back and adjust that window just by clicking on the window button. And now it's a little bit clearer. You can see the area that I windowed before. So this is only when you're printing from the model. Exactly, exactly. And when would you do that? Just if you want to do a quick print without setting up a page, without, without setting out a layout. So it is useful because you often will want to just do quick prints from that model space. So you can keep going back and adjusting your window until you're happy with the area that you've, uh, that you've chosen. Uh, and so now, because that shape is going to work better on landscape, I will actually double check that option. So you've got portrait and landscape down the bottom right there. And so before I can look at the preview, the last really important option is the scaling. And this is where people get a bit confused. When you're printing from the model tab, always set a scale. So this could be either 1 to 50 or 1 to 100. Either of those would make sense with this floor plan. So I'll do it with uh, 1 to 100 for now and I'm going to click preview. If you see this message, normally you can just click continue. And I can see then how that plan is going to print on the page size I've chosen. That was A3. So oh now here it's um, actually this button at the end with the cross that takes you back, not the print button. Uh, if, if you press the escape key that'll take you back as well. So escape or click on the cross to get out of that print preview and then you can go back and 
adjust the settings. Uh, so, oh, so the first thing, it was in the bottom left corner. So I'm going to tick center the plot. And I'll just do a preview again. And then again, continue here. So you can see now it's the same, but it's at least moved the plan to the center. So that can be a helpful option. I'll close the print preview again. And then I'll change the scale. So at 1 to 100, it was fairly small on an A3 page, but if I choose 1 to 50, and then preview, we can continue. Well, it actually takes up most of the page, but maybe I'd be happy with that and um, just let the balcony be cut off there. So here I can again close the print preview. And so now, if I click OK, it'll print, but printing here would make a PDF file. So, yeah, well, anywhere, if you choose that option. So it's a virtual printer. It's going to make a PDF file that looks the same as the way it would print. And that's a really useful thing in itself. Um, so I can click, instead of OK, Apply to Layout. And that saves the settings. So if I come back here, I could cancel this now. And now, if I go back to the menu and choose Print again, again, ignore that option, just continue to plot a single sheet. And it's got all those settings saved. So that's a good thing to know. If I click OK, it'll go through. Again, ignore these messages or just hit Continue. And again, instead of printing, it's going to make this PDF file. And it will open it if you want to check it. And that's a good way of checking your prints because I see a lot of people in here, and I'll look, don't be afraid of doing this, I do it myself. I'll print things out um, just to see how line weight's looking and other things. And that's um, definitely a good process. But you might find that if you just print to a PDF like this, then you can have a good look at them and, uh, and it might save you from doing a, a physical print. So a virtual print is a very useful thing and uh, you can of course take them to print shops and other places uh, to get them printed out as well. But I may want this to print out in here, so if I go back to print now on the main menu, I've set it all up for printing, so if I choose a real printer, any of these here that are DC print whatever, print 4, they're all our network printers. And so I'll just choose the first one in the list, which is uh, DC PL E01 E106 colour. And uh, you, I'm sure you've probably used that one, it's the laser printer over here. And so if I click OK now, uh, we should see it come out of the printer in a couple of seconds. Here it comes. There it is. So that's for doing quick, uh, quick prints. But we've got a few different things here. I've got a plan and a section. So if I wanted to print the section now, I'd have to go back into there and then set it up for the section, making a new window. And then if I wanted to go and print the plan again, I'd have to go and make a window for that. And it's a pretty messy way of working. So instead what you should do, once you have fixed areas that you want to print repeatedly, uh, like you do here, then it's highly recommended that you make layouts instead. And you'll have two layouts normally as a starting point, layout one and layout two. Now, you don't need that many, so don't be afraid to delete layouts if you've got too many and they're getting in the way. You can just right click on any of those tabs and delete them. The only one you can't delete is the model tab. So here you can see it'll tell me layouts will be deleted, that's fine. Uh, so again, I could delete this layout but I want to change it instead. So you can probably tell already, and I, I know actually you probably use these, this is a page setup. So that white area is our page area. And then, do you know what this thing sitting on the page is called? So, you might remember from last CAD one. 
Um, so it's a viewport. Probably one whoever wants you know. Yeah. So, okay. So that's a viewport that's been set up by default on the page. In other words, I didn't make it. So, don't be afraid to delete those as well. You can obviously use it if you want to, but I'm going to show you if you delete it by just selecting it and then pressing delete on the keyboard. It's easy to make them. You just need to go to the layout tab and then you'll see you've got the button there uh, that says rectangular. So again, the layout tab only comes up when you want a page. So if you're not on the layout, if you're still on the model tab, you won't see that last layout tab. So don't go looking for it. If it isn't there, you need to be on the layout tab and then you will see, so the layout down the bottom, the layout tab down the bottom, and then you'll see the layout tab come up the top. Um, so again, to make a viewport, the rectangular button there will make a rectangular viewport. You just need to click two points and it will create a view. But how do we know how big that is? You can, yeah, so that's, that's right, yeah. But again, I mean, I, I can definitely work out the scale, but I still don't know how big it is. Even if I look at the properties, where I can see the measurement, it'll tell me in millimetres how big this is. So it's 350 by 5, uh, 542. Still not really helping me that much because fundamentally, I don't know how big the page is yet. So before you can set this layout out up properly, as well as having a viewport, we need to be able to set the page. So the easy way to change the page is to right click on the tab for that page and then that's right, Page Setup Manager. So that's the one to remember when you're setting out your layouts. Page Setup Manager lets you adjust the layouts. So again, you can right click to go to Page Setup Manager or on the main menu you'll see under Plot uh, there's an option there. It actually just says Page Setup but that's the same thing. But like I was saying, right clicking on the tab is probably the easiest way. You'll always get Page Setup Manager there. Then don't be too fancy here or overthink it. If you choose these options, it gets really complicated. All you need to do is click Modify. I don't even know why they give you the option. Actually, there should just be an option to go in straight into here. So every time you see this dialog box, just click the Modify button. And then, what do you know? You've got the same options as you do for printing. But the setup is a little bit different. When you're printing from a layout, there's one major difference, and that is the scale. So I'll do that first, because, well, does anyone know what you should set it to when you're printing from a layout? There's only one right answer. Yeah, no, that's right, you got it, one to one. That's right, so yeah, one to one is the scale this should be set to every time when you're printing from a layout. Don't try to change this to a different scale unless there is a situation, but don't worry about that. For now, just make it one to one every time. So then also over here, what to plot, instead of setting it to a window, Generally, you should set that to layout. Okay, so what does that mean? It means it's going to print the layout that you've uh, chosen. So in other words, instead of trying to choose a window or a certain um, set of objects, it just uses the page. Whatever the page is, is what it'll print, which makes it really easy. Then. The page size here, A2 landscape, that's a bit big, so I'm going to go back to A3 landscape. So when you see landscape in brackets, it's just, so, it's just coming from the printer. Don't worry too much about what that means. You'll see you've got A3 portrait and landscape. These are all oversized actually, that's what this 
down here, again, A3 landscape, A3 portrait. Um, so choose the one that you want, but you should still use the options down here to set it to either landscape or portrait. Um, that's it, except, uh, again, the plot style um, should be set. So here it's already on monochrome because I set it for the first page. But you should still check that when you go to make your layouts. There are a few other little options that are good to know, like the quality. So have you ever seen when you do a print from AutoCAD, sometimes it'll give you streaky lines, or the hatch patterns will have lines going through them. You might have seen that happens sometimes. And uh, so that's because of the quality option here usually, so you can increase that. Usually later on when you do high quality, that'll help you. Otherwise though, that's um, everything I need for my page setup. So I'm gonna click OK, and just watch what's happened. As soon as I clicked OK, the page size changed. So I close this. So the viewport hasn't gotten bigger. You can see the viewport's hanging off the edge of my page. So it hasn't gotten bigger. The page has gotten smaller. So to make this print now, um, with what I've got in the viewport, I need to get that onto the page. So I'm simply going to click onto the border there and use the grips by picking on the corner points there. Those handles, I can then bring them down. Here, if you turn ortho off, it might help you. Ortho and polar. So we can just snap diagonally, or click diagonally. So again here, top right, I can just bring that down. Inside the dash line. If you're wondering, the outer um, edge of that white space is the page, and then the dash line there is the printable area of this printer. Even though they can do full bleed, have any of you got a full bleed printer? No? Lots of them are these days. So well, you'll see anyway, if you buy a printer uh, these days, a lot of them will do full bleed. So uh, it'll print all the way to the edge of the white, but you'll need to choose a, pe a special page for that. So normally even those full bleed printers will have an area um, that's inside the page like this, that it can actually print. So you should know that, and again, with AutoCAD it's a nice thing that it shows you that with a dash line. So as long as my viewport's inside that dash line, it'll print. Okay, so I've adjusted the, the size of the viewport. What do I do now to get the things inside the viewport set up for printing? Yeah, so how do we change into a different space? That's right, exactly. So this paper button tells us that we're in paper space. When it says paper, we're working on the page or in paper space. If you click on that button, then it goes to model. Unfortunately, it moves across a bit, which is a bit unfortunate, but um, it's still the same button. So when it says model, it's telling you you're in model space. And you can tell as well, because if I zoom or pan, it's only zooming or panning inside that viewport. So by panning and zooming, I can center that plan just roughly inside the viewport. And then, once I've got it roughly in position, I can never make it perfect because it'll change size when I set the scale. So I'll do that now. I'm going to choose 1 to 50. And you can see, just like before, it won't quite fit at this scale. Okay, so it's going to be cut off a little bit either side, no matter what I do. So I'll try a different scale. I'm going to try 1 to 100. And we can see then it fits easily. So I'm going to pan and bring that down a little bit, maybe. Maybe I'll keep it centered, though. That'll do. Okay, so I've got the plan where I want it to be in the viewport. Now I want to cut the viewport off a bit. So again, this is a typical process you'll use when you, whenever you set things up for printing. 
I've made a bit of an adjustment inside the view, then I can click on the model button to go back to paper space. And again, select the border of the viewport and use these grips to bring that down so it only includes the area I want to print. Okay, so I've just brought these things in a bit. And then now, I'm going to make another viewport for my section. So I'm just going to click the rectangular button again, click two points to make a new viewport. So notice it shows the same as this one did. In other words, it just shows everything as a starting point. So repeating the same steps as before, I'll click on the paper button and that will go into model space. But notice how this time the top viewport's active. Um, do you know how to change to a different viewport? If I want to do something in the bottom viewport, you can just click. So you can click between different viewports. When you have more than one, you'll often need to switch between them. So that's, that's important. And then, just like I did with the plan, I can zoom and pan to roughly position that on the page. But then to set the size more accurately, I can, I can choose to scale here, 1 to 100. And again, I can still pan to fine tune the position. But if I zoom, what's going to happen? Exactly, exactly. Zooming and scale are the same thing. So if I zoom in or out, these numbers are going to change <laughs> and it won't be at 1 to 100 anymore. So it's okay if you do that. You just need to remember to set the scale again back to 1 to 100. It wasn't far off, but now I know it's exactly. So I'm happy with that. And uh, I'll click on the model button to go back to paper space. And if I want to, maybe I could bring those borders in a little bit more, just to tidy it up slightly. So that's enough for now. Maybe, well actually one last little thing. Um, you might want to move the whole viewport. So I've shown you how you can use the grips to adjust the corners. But a good trick there, if you want to just drag a viewport, is to select it the same way, but then click and drag on the border anywhere but the corner. So in other words, along the edge there, you can just click and drag and see how it just drags the whole viewport. So I can reposition it. Right, so you'll need to do that quite often as well. Just reposition things roughly on your page. Real easy. And that'll give you room for a title block, which you might go over later as well. And many of you still trying to use those title blocks from the library? Yeah, how can we use the... Oh, they're terrible. Make your own. Like I was saying, yeah. Yep. Yeah, you can, you can insert them as blocks. You can insert them as blocks. Blocks. You can try that. But sometimes it's easy just to copy and paste. So copy and paste the things you've drawn. But I might go over that. I'll go over title blocks separately. Um, but uh, if you've had problems with title blocks, it probably is mostly to do with the blocks that you're using. And uh, so, again, go back to first principles and do it the way I was showing you with those references. Just draw basic geometry, lines and circles, uh, rather than trying to use blocks and, and other things which overcomplicate it in most cases. Um, then I'll show you how to make blocks later. So for now, that's, like I said, pretty much the way I want it to print. So I'll go and uh, show you now. If I go to the main menu and then print, just like before. But we don't need to set up very much here because it's all done already on the page. So I'm going to click the preview button. And that's going to show me how it's going to print. So it's always good to do the preview because then you can see any issues. And I can see there are a couple there that I'll want to fix before I print. So I want to bring the border up to, um, to crop off um, this part here. But also, I don't want to see the borders. 
So I'm not going to print this. I'm going to cancel the print. I'm going to click across there and then cancel. So do you know what you can do to make these borders not print? How do you make anything not print? Okay, you might not remember. We did this a while ago. Uh, make a layer. So here I've made a layer already called viewport. And I've made that layer non-printing. So over here you can see there's an option, a button that looks like a printer. And you can just choose that option. So if you don't have a viewport layer, maybe you'll need to make one, just make a new layer. And then set it to be non-printing over here with that icon. And then anything on that layer, these viewports, I can just choose, for example. And then in my list of layers, choose viewport. And now if I go back to print, preview, there we are. Okay, so that's pretty close. But I didn't bring this up enough, so I might just do that even more. That's better. So again, if I go back to the main menu, print, click the preview button, and that's probably a lot closer to what I want. So if I click OK, that's then going to print out. Oh yes, yes, yeah, definitely. And yeah. also the, 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 the both side of the vertical parallel line. We need to leave all these parallel lines. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So yeah. The, the for, for the no, no, just an outline for the elevation. Or making the line. Yeah, that's so right. Is that in this sense if it's a request for the line weight for the elevation? I know for the caption you can assume we just want a line weight. Yes. Yes, the same line weight for the outside, so thick for the outside edge in an elevation. I mean the elevation, yeah. so for the thick outside, but so only two styles of the line Yeah, and so this actually is, that's that's pretty close. That's how an internal uh, elevation okay, should look. Yeah, so that seems only two kinds of the line weight. Like yeah, totally. yeah, sometimes, yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah. In a section, you may have more because maybe the hatching that's, for, for materials that are being cut um, could be medium rather than uh, light or heavy. So you might end up with three, yeah, but I two main line weights, definitely. Line yeah. yeah, that's right. But uh, yeah, you're right. Mostly it's two line weights. That's right. Yes, that's right. That's right, line exactly. That's right. Yep. Oh. That's right. Yep. And remember, I was saying they're the things to watch out for when you're looking at the location. So for your second assignment, especially. Um, so this here might be the sort of thing you have in your internal elevations. Exactly. 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 And the importance of those is that they locate the unit. So by measuring from that wall. You can set out how yeah, far. Yeah, because yeah. that you need to. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Based on the yeah. That's right. Someone needs to know where, the, where these units go, and that someone is you because you'll be the person designing them. So okay. you need to locate them. So for the window treatment that we are going to present for the conference, yeah. like yeah. the Oh, no, you won't do that for me. That's, that's for your other subject. Yeah, we don't do that. Yeah, yeah. No, Yeah. Yeah. Look, to be honest, I'd recommend hand drawing for that. Hand drawing. Hand drawing. Yeah. Trace over the autocad. If you're talking about curtains and other things like that. Well, you 
do, but it's with hand drawing. Yeah, hand drawing. Yeah, curtains. Look, there are, you can draw curtains in AutoCAD if you're good with splines, but at this stage, it's going to be more work than you just drawing it by hand. And I think that's what they'd prefer in, in your other design subject anyway. I just, uh, my curtains, I just drew like a 200 mil helmet. Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's all right. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're presentation drawings. You wouldn't normally draw those things, to be honest. Yeah. You might do it for presentation drawings, but not for construction. So I'll just finish the recording. That's fine.